What's up, everybody? It's your boy Mars Man here, and I don't know about you, but Halo Infinite Season 5 feels like a game changer. With the official release of Halo Infinite Mid Season 5 update, we finally have so many new additions, but the most important is the fan favorite mode, Firefight. Now, I could talk all day long about why this update should have happened with the release of the game, but it seems 343 has finally fixed the problems that seems to have been plaguing this game since the very beginning. And now it actually feels like a game that we can play and actually enjoy. But not only did we get a firefight mode, but 343 has also added some maps, equipment, and actually even coding fixes. How does this mid-season update perform compared to the others? Does firefight slap that hard? And is Halo Infinite's gameplay finally fixed? Let's heal some vehicles, stomp out some grunts, jump right into this. So let's start off with the good. Firefight has honestly taken me by surprise and officially, in my opinion, is considered one of the best versions of the game mode in the entire series. I personally believe that it was going to be extremely difficult to match the level of Halo Reach and Halo 5's firefight with the massive maps and intense waves. But somehow, some way, Halo Infinite just feels so damn right. The basic function of the King of the Hill variant of this game mode is simple. Compete against the enemy to capture the hills, and honestly, they take a good amount of time. Basically, as we progress through capturing this hill, they send harder waves at us and officially end with a boss wave in the final round. After every hill captured, a campaign school is activated, which changes the way the game is played. So in some cases, you might lose your radar, or the enemy likes to throw more grenades, or maybe your Spartan gets ghosted on a date. Uh <coughs> I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that sounds like some real crazy stuff, right? What I like about this way to play is that it basically creates a new wave or new kind of variant, and it never really feels old. Firefight's biggest problem over the years is the over-repetitive nature of it all. But this feels refreshing. This feels like it's brand new, and I'm all for it. Playing with friends makes this mode feel better, and I can't tell you how good it feels that we finally have a PvE mode back in Halo again. It's definitely been needed. Along with the mid-season update, we actually got a big surprise, which was major fixes to desync. If you don't know, desync is where there's a slight lag between the server and the players in the match. If there's a problem with desync, this can result in complete anger and frustration. So an example of this is basically in a scenario where you are competing against an opponent, and all of a sudden when you're fighting against that person in a firefight and you feel like you're about to get killed, you have to run away like a bitch. And as you cross a corner, you think to yourself, thank God I finally got out of it. And all of a sudden you get killed and you're just straight up confused. Didn't I just dodge that? Did he curve the bullet like it was the movie Wanted? No, that's just decent. On your screen, you're safe. But on the opponent's screen, you have not passed that corner yet and he shot you before you got there. In other cases, bullet registration is not really that crisp and it actually makes it worse for players that do not have the best connection. So 3 for 3 had stated that they were in the process of recoding the game, which caught a lot of people off guard. But with the mid-season update, they launched these new desync fixes, and honestly, it's worked so far. Currently, in both Firefight and Squad Battle, we see these updates in place, and people are loving them. I do feel like it is crisper in the movements and gunfire, which is great to see. My expectation is that whoever coded the game originally must have had some crap data servers to work on, or they were just blind when coding the game. And currently, it feels like with all these new updates, it feels like they fixed a lot of the problems, which, in my opinion, is just great. We have finally gotten a new equipment, which was rumored for so long, which is the repair field. Basically, this mirrors the health regenerator from Halo 3. The basic idea from this equipment is to drop this pod on the ground, and it will act as a med kit to fix your vehicle and even heal or revive your Spartan. Now, granted, there are some limitations. It's not as powerful as the original version where it was nearly impossible to kill somebody that was sitting inside of it. I mean, it can't fix the Halo show, so it's not a miracle work. I feel like it was something that was much needed for a while now, especially since most vehicles feel like they're made of construction paper that are destroyed within seconds. What's really cool about this equipment is that you can actually attach this to vehicles as it drives and moves around so it can basically heal you while you combat against other people. It's not really that overpowered, but if you do find one and you're smart about it, you can be deadly. So having this equipment added to Halo Infinite feels like it's a perfect addition and I'm all for it. And by the way, if you like the repair field, maybe you can drop a thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. Now back to the video. What I think is the hidden gem added to the update that I adore is the fact that bosses were added into Forge. I mean, I know I've been saying this for the last few videos, 
but Forge is the savior of this game. As much as I'm depressed at the fact that there will not be any Halo Infinite campaign DLC, what at least gets me excited is that people from the community that are way more creative than me have the ability to make campaign missions using bosses from the main story. Being able to spawn Eshram or Jago Rodani it within Forge can open up so many avenues for story creation. And I already know that there are so many possibilities that we can get to play because of it. I mean, the fact that they fix customs we can join in a squad is already a godsend because of the longest time being able to find a match together was literally the most difficult thing in the world and just made my brain hurt. So when people make store missions in Forge and release them into the custom games, it's just going to open the door to just have so much more ways to play. And I think it's just incredible. Now with the good, we have to talk about the bad. I think right off the bat, we need to thank 343 for finally giving us Firefight after so damn long. But some critiques I have definitely have to do with the maps. So basically up until this point, update after update, 343 has been killing it in the map design game, where nearly every map has been drop dead gorgeous and its design, aesthetic, and just overall playability, except for Chasm. And when they announced that with Firefight, they will be giving us a plethora of maps that go with this new game mode, me and the rest of the fans got hyped. So what did we get? Repurposed maps from the game that just put Firefight settings in it? Ugh. Don't get me wrong, some maps work well. Exile, Valhalla, Deadlock, all are pretty damn good. Even the campaign map, The Reckoning, is amazing. But but come on, 343, three, you're drunk. It's it's time to sober up. Stop trying to be Activision and repurposing maps from other game modes and just using them to, and calling them new maps. That's like something I'd see from Sledgehammer, not, not from you. Especially up until this point, they have been very adamant about releasing maps in a very timely manner for new modes like this. Why don't you just use some Forge-based maps that I played on and at least it'd feel more new than what you actually did. Continuing with Firefight, I don't want to come off as a sweaty Chad, but we really need to increase the difficulty of Firefight. At the moment, we have Heroic and Gerber Baby difficulty that poses little to no challenge. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna lie, I have been slapped around by Tyrannus, which is basically a brute holding a rocket launcher, and have lost a few games. But it's only because I was not really trying that hard. But jokes aside, for the most part, these enemies are easy as hell. In the current version of the game, the only way to lose is if your enemy captures more than two bases, which is literally impossible, or your whole team of four gets wiped out. So basically, as long as you survive around, then at least at some point, even dudes getting killed will be Provide. There are times that three players would be killed and we just yelled at my boy D Ravo to run away and we somehow still won the game. The way the game functions is kind of implores or encourages you to just run away in times of crisis. We must fight to run away. I, I mean, I don't know if I support the idea of just strategically running away, but that's kind of the flaw of how this game mode works. Most firefight modes have a death counter and the more you die, the faster you lose. So it rewards you for being smart and not just charging in. Maybe they will add more variants of the mode where this will be the case, but at the moment, it just feels like a problem. With new modes, there are always going to be things I feel like that are missing or at least need to be fixed. For example, we need to have enemies controlling vehicles or at least more vehicles for us to drive in this mode. One of the most fun aspects of Halo is the vehicle combat. So having the ability to combat against enemies in wraiths or ghosts would be perfect in this scenario, especially since we've had to do this throughout the entire campaign. And I know that 3 for 3 has already announced that they're working on doing this, but it's just something I saw right away. The mode overall feels amazing, but there are just some small things that just feel like they're missing or at least need to be adjusted. Give us more incentives for us playing this mode. Give us more XP or maybe make separate challenge system just for firefight. I heard recently that 3 for 3 is basically closing the community support for MCC and diverging the remaining groups for 3 for 3's inclusion of Halo Infinite. So that means that maybe we should include more combinations or give us rewards for playing this mode. I feel like people want to see Halo Infinite be the game that takes the ideas that we have and love and expands them to make them better than anything we've ever seen before. And I feel like this would be the moment to do that. And lastly, with Firefight finally being here, 3 for 3 needs to do me a favor. Stop dodging the mode that needs the most attention and is currently struggling, and I'm talking about big team battle. I love all the new adjustments you've added to this game since launch, and finally the game feels good. But for the love of everything Halo, I swear on the holy rings, please give us new BTB maps ASAP. I have been the trailblazer, the one that's been leading the charge 
that has literally been yelling about this for a year and I want my answers. Give us a BTB Forge playlist. There have been so many badasses out there that share my love for BTB and made some insane creations within Forge, but we have not seen a single addition since the spring. This mode needs help. Please do us all a favor and give more attention to BTB. It definitely needs your help. So my final verdict, I'm going to be real with you guys. This mid-season update just slaps. Firefly being added to Halo has honestly given me a sign of relief, knowing that the mode that people, including myself, have been waiting since day one is finally released and we can officially confirm that Halo Infinite finally feels like a complete Halo game that we wanted since launch. With new additions of the repair field and a much needed fix to desync, it honestly confirms that 3 for 3 should have been nominated for the best community support game of 2023. 3 for 3, as much as you have done some dumb things in the past, this new regime that we have has just dropped a fire ass update and I salute you for your work. Sure, there are some fixes I want to see overall, but this is one hell of a time to be a Halo fan. And I recommend jumping into season five because it is straight up fire. But what do you think about season five of Halo Infinite so far? Are there things you want to see added or fixed for season six? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you like this type of content, give your boy a thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. Till next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.